Jonathan Katz Moses was wrong. Well, he wasn't entirely wrong, but he was mostly wrong. Okay, he was right and he was wrong. Let me explain. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. If you are anything like me, you have purchased many different sandpapers from many different vendors over the years. If you're also like me, you've noticed that certain sandpapers don't work as well as others, but you have no idea why. Generally, the less expensive sandpapers perform less well than the more expensive sandpapers. However, that's not always the case. Sometimes the more expensive sandpapers are no better than the less expensive ones. A while ago, Jonathan Katz Moses did a video comparing a wide range of sandpapers, trying to determine their effectiveness over time and generally how well they remove material relative to their costs. As you probably know, sandpaper degrades over time as the particles on the papers get worn down, broken, or fall off the backing. The more particles that end up in that degraded state, the less effective your sandpaper becomes. Degradation comes from many areas, but the two big factors are the heat generated from the sanding process and the separation of the sanding material from the backing. Heat dulls the sanding material, reducing its effectiveness, and the mechanical stresses of the sanding process can break the particles free from the backing material. The more dull the particles are, or the fewer particles there are, the less effective the sanding paper is at removing material. In Jonathan's video, he did a robust test comparing material removal abilities of the different brands over time. He used a robot to provide constant even pressure across the material, and he slowly moved the sandpaper around to avoid the excess heat or debris buildup. In my opinion, it was an exceptionally well-designed test. Sort of. In the end, Jonathan discovered the 3M extract sandpaper removed the most material and provided the lowest overall cost per sheet. Although on the surface it appears extract is more expensive than some of the other options like Merca or Festool, when you factor in their material removal rates, literally extract won hands down. No other sandpaper came close to extract's ability to remove materials. Now I've been using extract sandpaper for the better part of a year now, and I have to tell you, it is utter garbage, sort of. Jonathan designed his test to remove material on a large flat piece of wood. Though that is excellent from a testing perspective, it is far from realistic. In the real world, we do sand flat panels, but our sanding is not limited to that. We have to sand irregular shaped items, corners, vertical surfaces, edges, and a variety of other geometries. In fact, I can't recall a single project that I have made that was limited to sanding only a flat surface. All of my projects require sanding not only the flat surfaces, but the sides, the edges, the insets, and sometimes coves. This is where the magic of the extract sandpaper breaks down. In regular use, I found extract sandpaper to form well below average for anything other than flat surfaces. The minute you start moving the sander around the edges or the corners, the cubitron particles start flaking off in large volumes. The mesh backing starts breaking down and the entire sandpaper degrades. It falls apart so quickly that it'll actually ruin the pad on your sander. Drew Witt from Witworks did a video about this, which I will link to below in the description. I can 100% back up Drew's observations. I literally destroyed a backing pad for my Merca sander using the extract sandpaper. The backing pad became so useless, the sandpaper refused to stick to it, and it would literally fly off the minute the sander got up to speed. To help protect your sander, use a pad protector anytime you are using mesh-based sandpaper. You can get a two-pack of the pad protectors for around $15, which is about 75% less than the cost of a new sanding pad. Although the protecting pad will degrade over time, and you will need to replace it, they are a lot less expensive than the sanding pad itself. Now, I want to be very clear. The issue with the extract falling apart during sanding is not exclusive to the extract sandpaper. It will happen to any mesh-backed sanding paper. They just don't have the mechanical stability to hold up to aggressive sanding. My Merca mesh-based sandpaper falls apart just as quickly as the extract does. However, given the price of the extract, you will not see that cost per sheet benefit that Jonathan published under his video. You will likely destroy the extract backing well before you reach the natural end of the sandpaper itself. Because of that, the results published by Jonathan are simply not realistic in the real world. Let me give you an example. 
at the time of his video, the Extract 710W sandpaper, which is the mesh-backed variety, costs about 41 cents per sheet. The second place sandpaper, which is also a 3M Cubitron variant, is the paper-backed 775L at 84 cents per sheet. On the surface, it seems like the extract is significantly less expensive than the paperback version. However, if you can only use the extract for one sanding session because it falls apart, and you can use the paperback version for three or four sessions, suddenly the initial higher cost of the paperback version is significantly outweighed by its durability. More importantly, if you compare sanding removal rates, the extract is 1.5 times better than the 775. But if you can only use the extract for one sanding session and you can use the 775 for two or more, you're much better off spending the extra money up front for the 775 over the extract. Look, I actually love the extract sandpaper. It removes a lot of material and it has a much better dust collection than traditional paperback sandpaper. But it simply doesn't last in a real world use. It literally falls apart and becomes utterly useless after sanding a few items. More importantly, after Jonathan published his results, the demand for extract skyrocketed and the prices went up. The best price that I could find for extract today was 75 cents per sheet, which is just under double what Jonathan tested at. In all fairness, the cost of the 775, the paperback version, has also gone up as well, and is now three times more expensive than extract. But then again, if it lasts three or four more times longer, in the end, you will break even on that cost versus material removal rate. Editing Tom breaking in from the future. I did a little more digging and I found sources for both the extract and the 775L for less than I quoted in the original video. However, both costs are still higher than what Jonathan found during his video. Today, I found a 50 pack of the six inch extract, 120 grit, for $32.66 or 65 cents per sheet. I also found a 50 pack of the six inch 775L 120 grit for $62.70 or $1.25 per sheet. So the raw cost of the 775L is still 1.9 times more expensive than the extract. And when you factor in the efficiency of the extract over the 775L, the actual cost of the 775L is about three times more expensive per sheet than extract. However, like I said, if it lasts three times longer, you will break even despite the higher upfront costs. If you use less expensive sandpaper that has a moderate material removal rate and doesn't fall apart, you might actually be money ahead. This completely depends on how you use the sandpaper and how well extract survives your sanding style. All right, back to the original video. So for anyone who watched Jonathan's video and is considering purchasing some extract, buyer beware. It might seem like a good deal, but it might not be. If you have used extract sandpaper, I'm interested in your feedback and your comments. Does your normal daily use align to the results that I'm seeing? Are you getting better results or worse results? leave your comments down below. If you like this video and you found value in it, please consider hitting that thumbs up button or the subscribe button or sharing it. It really does help the channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please consider heading over to our Etsy store and picking up some models or plans, or maybe even some finished items that we offer. If you're interested in how I use my sandpaper in my projects, please check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget, to be inspired.